Good evening, everyone. This is Robert RJL518, welcoming you to another exciting edition of Inside Pitch. The 1976 season is on the air. We're only a couple of days left in the month of July. Today's date is July 29th, 1976. We are at the stadium by the front of the river. Today's game, it's the San Diego Padres meeting up with the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds come into this game 65 and 35, first place in the National League West. Pretty much will win this division and probably will get the number one seed in the National League playoffs. The Padres are 49 and 52. They are in fourth place in the National League West, but very much a lot. They are very much alive. They only trail the Giants by two wins. The Dodgers trail the Giants by three wins. Houston is now in second place in this division, but. Still two more months of baseball. Anything can happen. BB, BB, Steeler fan and Bob's Tabletop Sports joins us here at Riverfront Stadium for tonight's game. So it's an important game for the Padres. All the Reds want to do is just continue to pad their lead. As I said, Cincinnati right now leads the Astros by 11 wins in the National League West. So right now, as I said, it looks like it's going to be their National League West title to lose. And I don't think they're going to do it. Starting pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds tonight is Pat Zachary. 14 wins, 7 losses, 2.74 ERA. Pat Zachary, who the Mets would trade Tom Seaver for next year. Section 518 barfs. Blech. Zachary gets the call tonight. Cincinnati historically won this game 9-3. to uh, There were 18 hits and 2 errors combined between the two teams. Let's get started. Top of the first. Let's get right to baseball. Leading off for the Padres, left fielder Jerry Turner. 267 average, five homers, 37 RBIs. Still, of course, using the beta charts for inside pitch. Red and white dice representing the Reds as they are the home team. Let's get to work. Zachary with a 6-6. Six, six. That is a blank. Turner will swing 4-1, and that's going to be a fly out to center. Turner flies out to center there. And the next batter, second baseman, Tito Fuentes. 263 average, two homers, 36 RBIs in 76. Zachary, 1-3, hit by pitch. That ain't no. Fuentes will take a whack at it, 2-2, two -two, and he grounds out short. T quick two outs there by Zachary. Next up for the Padres, right fielder Johnny Grubb. He's in right today. 284 average, five homers, 27 RBIs. He gets the call. Zachary ready to pitch. 6-6, six, six, blank, Grubb. 2-6, single into right field. That's a base hit for Grubb. And he will trot down to first on a two-out single. Brings up the very dangerous... Dave Winfield. Winfield is in center field for this game today, not in right. 283 average, 13 homers, 69 RBI. Still a heck of an arm, but not as much in range. Infield is back. Let's see if anything happening on the bases with Grubb. That 17 is a no. Zachary will pitch. 3-1. Error on a grounder. Winfield, 5-5. Five, five. That is a base hit to right field. That's it to right. And that is hit to Ken Griffey. His error rating is a four. That's an eight. He's not going to make an error. So now let's see what happens with Grubb. Base running rating's a two. With two outs is a three. Single to right plus single to right is plus two is a five. And Griffey has a plus one arm, so it's a six. So Griffey's automatically, so Grubb's automatically going to make third. And Winfield will hold it first. So no error on Griffey, but now the Padres start off with runners at first and third, now with two outs. Here is Mike Ivey. Ivey's at first base tonight, 291 average, seven homers, 70 RBIs. Having trouble to figure out the bunt play on inside pitch. Okay, not a problem. Maybe I'll, if I have a bunt, I'll show you what happens. And Bob says he's wearing his Johnny Bench jersey today, okay, for a Brewers game. Let's see. Runners at first and third. Let's see if anything on the bases. The 11 says no. 
Zachary 4-2. That's at the park. Riverfront Stadium 3-1. That is a ball hit to left field. That is a 15. That is a possible home run by Mike Ivey. Possible homer by Ivy. Ivy against a righty is a five. He needs a five or a lower to hit a home run. If it's over that, it's just going to be a fly out the left. It's a nine, and that's a high fly ball, but that's going to be caught by Foster, and he will make the catch and retire the side. That is a fly out the left, and the inning is over. No runs, two hits for the Padres. As Ivy hit a good one, but not deep enough, as plenty of as just enough room there for George Foster to make the catch. We go to the bottom of the first, pretty much caught at the wall. Starting pitcher for the San Diego Padres, once again, is Dave Frazlebin. He pitched a pretty good game the last time he was out. 10 wins, 13 losses, a save, 3-5-1 ERA. He once again gets the call for the Padres in this game. And you said you're having trouble figuring out the bunt play. Tell me what you're having a problem with. Bunts are pretty simple, really. Um, bunts are pretty simple, actually. You just go ahead and roll two dice. First, you roll for the pitcher to see what he comes up with. And then you roll for the batter. And here is the dice roll where it goes to. And depending if the infielder it's hit to is in, all right, you just follow the rules on the bunt chart. That's all you got to do. But you'll have to explain to me what your, what, uh, your, ask, what your issue is. Leading off for the Reds, third baseman Charlie Hustle, a.k.a. Pete Rose. 323 average, 10 homers, 63 RBIs. Pete Rose, Charlie Hustle, Freslebin with the pitch. 2-2, two -two, range play. Rose, 1-1, one -one, fly ball to left field. That is hit to Jerry Turner. His range is a 2. He's got it, makes the catch. Out number 1, nice play by Turner. On a nice range play. That will bring up the right fielder, Ken Griffey. 336 average, 6 homers, 74 RBIs. Bunting for a hit. Okay, that's a little different. And you have to follow the chart in the rule book. And you have to follow um, bunting for it's a little different. There is a chart for that in there. It's not done most often. I don't think I've ever had a player bunt for a hit yet. I don't think I've ever tried that. But I'll have to get to, I'll have to, get to you on that. Freslebin will pitch to Griffey, and that is a 1-5. Strikeout, 20, no. Riverfront Stadium adds one to strikeouts and one to walks. Griffey will swing, 2-3. That's a base hit past second, and Griffey has a single. And that will put a man on first there. And that will bring up second baseman, Little Joe Morgan. 320 average, 27 homers, 111 RBIs. Pretty good year for Joe Morgan in 76. The infield is halfway, guarding for the double play. Let's see if anything happening with Griffey. That is a 17 and no. Freslebin will pitch. Freslebin 2-2. Again, a range play. Morgan, 1-3, and that's a high fly ball to left field, and that ball is high, deep, gone, home run, Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan, a 1-3 against the righty is an H-7, that is a straight home run over the left field fence, that is gone. Morgan goes ahead and blasts that one out of here, it's a two-run jack. Straight home run, and it is 2 nothing Reds. Stadium cheers. Yay! Joe Morgan goes ahead and belts that one. Freslebin made a good pitch. Morgan just made a better Morgan just made a better hit. Morgan just made a better hit. That's all that was. 2 nothing Reds. Next up is George Foster. He is in left field for the game. Foster, 306, 29 homers, 121 in RBIs. Bob's Tabletop Sports joins us here. Oh, he's already here, and you're missing the red score. Yep, a home run by a two-run homer by Joe Morgan. 
Frazlebin will pitch. 5-2. That's a blank. Foster. 2-5. He grounds it to first. That is the second out. And that will bring up the catcher, Mr. Johnny Bench. 234 average, 16 homers, 74 RBIs. Not one of Bench's better years, but still very dangerous at the plate. A heck of a catcher, of course. Maybe, maybe the best ever to play the position. Maybe. I know we can we could talk about Pudge, Pudge Rodriguez, we could talk about Fisk. We could talk about Yogi Berra, but maybe Johnny Bench may have been the best positional catcher. I don't know. It's debatable. Fraze LeBin will pitch. 3-3. Three, three. Range play at the park. Riverfront Stadium, 1-6. That's a pop-up behind the plate to the catcher, and that is Fred Kendall. Kendall's range is a 3. He'll make the catch in foul territory to end the inning. And that will end it. Two runs for the Reds on two hits. A two-run jack by Little Joe Morgan. After, after one, the Reds have a 2-0 lead. As Bob B. joins us here at the stadium by the front of River, and he says, great, but no Ted Simmons. Yeah, okay, sure. Whatever you say there, Bob B. Leading off for the Padres, third baseman Doug Rader, 257 average, nine homers, 55 RBIs that year. Zachary with the pitch, 6-6, six, six, that's blank. Rader, 5-4, that's going to be a fly out to center on a, on a star, on an automatic out. Fly out to center, one down. And here is the catcher, Fred Kendall, 246 average, two homers, 39 RBI. 6'6", six, six. again, that's a blank. Kendall will swing, 1-3, that's a fly out the left. Wow, Zachary hitting a lot of blanks so far. Two men down, here's the shortstop, Enzo Hernandez, 256 average, a homer, 24 RBIs. Pitch from Zachary. 3 1. Error on a grounder. Hernandez. 4 5. That's a star four. That is a ground ball to third. That's it to Rose. Rose's error rating is a six. That's an 18. He won't have a problem with that. He'll toss it over to first. 1 2 3. Go the Padres. Are you sure you're playing a 1976 day phrasal bin replay? I like us. That's just who's coming up when I choose these games. Trust me, I want San Diego's not going away by any means. They're still very much going to be in the next schedule block because they're still very much alive for a playoff berth. I got to get Randy Jones on the mound somehow, somewhere. Another question example Willie Montanez is in the Giants lineup during the season, but later traded to the Braves. Do you just use his Braves card on the Giants? Yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. That's what you do. Yes. Um, some play some uh one company that does make multiple cards for a player that's traded is Joe Bryan's payoff pitch, which is genius. Okay, that's the one thing I love about payoff pitch. He will go ahead and make multiple cards for a player that served on both teams on on a number of teams. Uh, Chris doesn't do that for inside pitch. That's fine. Just take the break. Just take the card that he's supposed to be on. All right, and put it with that team. That's all. You'll oh, if, if you notice, every time I have a card from a different with a different uniform on, I'll always mention that player was trade will be traded or was traded or signed as a free agent. I'll always say that if I have a different uniform on, I'm not matching the cards, and I've done that throughout the season so far. Bottom of the second, here is first baseman Tony Perez. 260 average, 19 homers, 91 RBIs. Let's see if Frazel Ben can have a better inning. 3-3, three, three, range play at the park. Riverfront Stadium, 2-4, star four. That's a ground ball to third. That is hit to Doug Rader. His range is a four. He won't get it. That's going to be a single or a double. That's going to be a single for Perez. As he gets it right past Raider, just barely out of his reach. Runner on first, infield half. 
Next batter, center fielder, Cesar Geronimo. 307 average, two homers, 949 RBIs that season. Check to see if anything happening on the bases. That 16 says a no. Frazlebin, 5-2, blank. Geronimo, 2-6, star one. That's a ground out to second base. Let's see if we get a double play. One, zero, two. Shortstop is Hernandez, and he has a zero. One to two, it's a double play. Nope. Perez is going to make on that six. Perez is going to make second. The only play was at first, and that is one out. Next up is the shortstop, Dave Concepcion. 281 average, nine homers, 69 RBIs. Infield is now back. See if anything happening on the bases. That is a 16. Fraze Lebin will pitch. 1-3. That's a walk. 11. No. Concepcion. 4-4. Four, four. That's a grounder to second. The throw goes to first for out number two. Perez will automatically advance to third. That brings up the pitcher. Pat Zachary had a 113 average that year. Fraisler been with the pitch. Actually, still roll strat. See if anything happening, although I doubt it. And that is a nine. No. Fraisler been. Six, six. That's a wild pitch. A three. And it goes to the backstop. And Perez will come in to score. Oh, boy. How do you do a wild pitch with the pitcher at the plate? A wild pitch will bring in will bring in Geronimo, and the Reds now lead it three nothing. And now Zachary will bat with nobody on the base. Fresla but can't believe it. A wild pitch. Fresla been with the pitch three three. That's a range play at the park. Riverfront Stadium one one. That's a base hit, possibly to right field, single, possible double. That ball is into Johnny Grubb. His range is a three. He won't get it. Zachary round, it is a single plus, so Zachary has to try for second. Probably not going to get it, though. Base running rating is a one. Right fielder Grubb plus one is a two arm. So a one to two, Zachary will go to second. Three to five, he holds six. He's out. And he's out. And that retires the side as, for some reason, Pat Zachary decided to try for second base. The throw from Johnny Grubby throws to second and gets him out to end the inning. That is a base hit for Zachary, but he is cut down at second base. So one run, two hits for the Reds. After two, they lead three to nothing. How can the Reds be so good when they're involved in a tie in the 10-minute tick of a lousy clutch factor? As I said, so, as I said, there's got to be something else about that. I did email him to find out why he chose that. I haven't gotten an answer back. And I'll be honest, I'm not expecting one. And I'm just gonna go by what, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go by what he decided, and that's it. Like I said, I may, I may question certain things on games, but I really will not question somebody with the ratings unless they actually tell me the ratings should be different. Then I'll make a change on the card. Top of the third. And here's the pitcher, Dave Frazlebin for the Padres. 189 average as a hitter. You don't have to worry about the Reds, though. The Reds are going to make are going to win this division. It they're, they're, doesn't matter. They're going to win the division. Zachary's pitch, 3-3. Three, three. Home run, question mark. Fresnelbin has absolutely no home run power, so I'm just going to bypass it. It's an automatic blank. 4-3, and he grounds it right back to Zachary, and Zachary will throw to first. Out number one. Don't even have to check that. Here's Jerry Turner. Turner is 0 for 1. Zachary, 1-1. One, one. That's a blank. Turner, 4-5. That's a ground out to short. Two down. And now here's Fuentes. Fuentes is 0 for 1. Zachary ready to pitch. 3-3. Three, three. Again, a home run with a question mark. But Fuentes against the righty is a 0. So it won't matter even if he made it, which the 20 he didn't. So no, that's a blank. 
Fuentes will swing, though, 4-2, and he hits a line, a high fly ball to center field, and that will be caught easily there by Geronimo, and it's a 1-2-3 inning on the Padres. Nice job by Zachary doing it, and we go to the bottom of the third. One thing about the Cincinnati Reds, since you have since uh, BB brought up about uh, transactions, the Cincinnati Reds pretty much left their team alone. There's not that many cards for the Reds in the '76 season, mostly because they they mostly left their team alone. They did not make many transactions that year. Bottom of the third, Zachary thought it was Lou Brock. Yeah. Bottom of the third, and here's Charlie Hustle. He is 0 for 1. Frazlebin with the pitch. 5-3 against a lefty switch. That's a blank. Rose, 4-4. Four, four. Single into left field. Base hit. Rose will get to first. As the big red machine looks like they're chugging on all cylinders so far tonight. Here is Griffey. Griffey, one for one, singled his first time up. Infield is halfway. That is a two. Uh, hmm. Hit and run is available. Rose is a 13. But you know, you're up by three runs. No. I'll call it off and I'll let Griffey with that 336 batting average hit away. Frazlebin, 5 2. That's a blank. Griffey swings. 2-6. That's a ball hit to left field. That is a 12. Against a right-hander, Griffey just smacked a triple. And that's why I let Ken Griffey hit. A 2-6, a ball hit to left. A 12 against a right is a clean triple. Griffey will go to third. Rose will come in to score. Four nothing Reds, and I think we're on our way to a blowout. Of course, the Reds won this game nine to three, so we could be on our way to that. Exactly, Bob's Tabletop Sports. Here's Joe Morgan. He gets a nice standing ovation here from Riverfront. Hit a home run his first time up. He's one for one. Padre bullpen already getting warmed up here. We'll see if anything happening on the bases. And that 15 says no. Fresla Ben will pitch. One, three. Walk. Three. Yes. Morgan will trot down to first. Runners at the corners now for George Foster. Yeah, Dar yep, exactly. It was Darcy that hinted in Sarmiento, correct. And Darcy is not on the roster for today's game. He is inactive. Runners at the corners now. George Foster, the batter, he's 0 for 1. Infield is going to still play halfway. They're going to try to see if they can turn a double play to get out of it. Anything on the bases, that is a 15. Morgan does not get a jump. Fraze LeBin will pitch. 3-3, three, three. range play at the park. Riverfront Stadium, 5-1. That is a home run to the opposite field. Foster is a 20. There's no need to roll it. Kaboom! High, deep, gone. Home run, George Foster. George Foster smacks that one to right. Pope Pope put so much on it, and he gets that right into right field. That is a three-run jack by Foster. Three more runs come in, and the Reds are putting on a clinic against the Padres and now lead seven to nothing. It's going to be one of those games. Why George Foster couldn't do that with the 86 Mets before we had to get rid of them I'll, I'll, so much, I'll never know. That's going to be it for Fresla, Ben. He is gone. He is gone. And still nobody out here in the top, in the, in the bottom of the third inning. So Fresla, Ben is gone. 
and we're going to see a new pitcher. And since it is the third, it is before halfway through the game, I can bring in a starter to pitch if I want to. And let's see who I want here. And if he's got, of course, relief appearances. And coming on to pitch for the Padres. Actually, I'm not sure about him. Hold on. I need a pitcher that can pitch a few innings. Let's see. He can pitch seven, seven, seven. Let me see here. Spilner. Yeah, I guess it'll be him. Coming on to pitch for the Padres will be Dan Spilner. Two wins, 11 losses, 5.06 ERA. As the Reds chase Frazlebin out of here. Frazlebin had a great game the last time he pitched. But here against the big red machine, he just goes ahead and gets crushed. And here is Mr. Johnny Bench. Bench is 0 for 1. Spilner will pitch. 5-6. Range play at the park. Riverfront Stadium making a big difference. 1-5. That's a ground ball to first. That's hit to Mike Ivey. His range is a 4. He'll make the play. He'll toss it to Spilner covering the bag. Out number 1. One out. The batter now is Perez. Perez is one for one with a single. Spilner with the pitch. One six. That's a blank. He's not tired. Perez will swing. Two five. That's a ball hit to center field. That is a four against the righty. Perez has himself a double. And Perez has his second end of the game. And he will go to second on a double. And now here's Cesar Geronimo. Geronimo 0 for 1. Padres already down 7 to nothing. Inside pitch. You got to love the game. Last night we had a 1 nothing game. Tonight we have a 7 nothing game. Spilner will go ahead and pitch. Still rolling a strat though. That is an 11, nothing happening. But now the Reds do not have to move any further since they have a seven-run lead. 5-4, that's blank. Geronimo, 5-4. That's a base hit to center field. That is a single for Geronimo. Tony Perez's base running rating is a two. Single to center, plus two is a four. Winfield minus two is a two. I'm going to hold Perez at third. There's no need to challenge the arm. Only on a one to two chance, I'll let Perez stay at third base. And Geronimo will stay at first. Runners at the corners for Dave Concepcion. Still one out here in the bottom of the third. Reds looking to put more runs on the Padres. Concepcion is 0, for, is 0 for 1, still rolling the strat. That is a 3, and nothing happening here. I'm not going to hit and run. No need to hit and run. Spilner will go ahead and pitch. 3-1 against the righty. That's a blank. Concepcion, 5-6. Line drive right to third. That's out number 2, and a line out to third. A one or a three, we have a double play. It is a four. No, they both get back. They both get back. Perez and Aronimo both get back before so they don't get doubled up, and that is two outs. And now here's Pat Zachary, who gets a little bit of a cheer from Riverfront, going ahead and getting a single, but then getting thrown out at second. Zachary's one for one. Checking to see what happened here. Nothing on the bases. Spilner will pitch. 6-2. Home run chance. Straight home run chance. But Zachary is zero. So he can't hit anything. But let's see what he can do. 1-6. And he just grounds it back to Spilner. Who will underhand it to first to end the inning. The Reds send nine men to the plate. Four runs on one, two, three, four. Five hits, a three-run jack by George Foster, and the Reds lead it 7-0 after three. 
If you're a Padres fan, I am so sorry, but the big red machine is is on tonight. And they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs. I know they will. And I'm already can't wait for the playoffs to start. And we still got two more months of regular season action to play. Top of the fourth inning, here's Johnny Grubb. Grubb is one for one, singled his first time up. Zachary, 6-2. That's a walk. The eight will walk Grubb. Grubb will trot down to first on a leadoff walk. First walk issued by Zachary. He had 79 of them in 76. Hall of Famer Dave Winfield is next. Winfield is one for one. He's singled. The infield is halfway, but there is no more strat roll at this time. Zachary, 5-3, walk, 14. Yes, he walks Winfield. So now the Padres have runners at first and second and nobody out. So two consecutive walks by Zachary. And that will bring up Mike Ivy. Ivy 0 for 1. Infield still halfway. Zachary ready to pitch. 2-2. Two, two. That's a strikeout. 20. No. Ivy will swing. 1-5. Base hit past third. That's a single for Ivy. Grubb's base running rating is a 2. Single past third. He will not make it to home. He will have to hold at third base. And the bases are loaded for the Padres. With nobody out here on the top of the fourth. A chance now for Doug Rader. Bears Den 007 joins us here at the stadium by the front of the river. Bases loaded. Zachary in a bit of a jam. Reds lead 7-0, but the Padres are looking to knock on the door for some runs. They're going to play the infield halfway. The Reds are going to try to turn two. Zachary will pitch. 5-1. Strikeout. 7. Got him. Struck out Doug Rader. That's a big K. Out number one. Strikeout number one for Zachary. Had 143 of them that year. Rader couldn't do it. Let's see what Fred Kendall can do. He's 0 for 1. Zachary ready to pitch. 1-5 against a righty. A walk. 14. That's too high. Kendall will swing. 3-5. It's a fly ball to center field. That is out number two. Kendall sacrifice fly rating is a two. And he will bring in Johnny Grubb automatically. So Grubb will come in to score. He will come in to score. And let me see something here on that because there is a chance for Winfield to get the third on that kind of roll. So let's see what happens here. Let's see. Dave Winfield's base running rating is a four, minus two center field. Center field is, is, center fielder is Geronimo as a zero, a one to two for Winfield to try to get the third. The only way he's out is on, the only way he possibly could be out is on a six, six. I'm going to try to send him. So on a one or two, he makes it the third. He doesn't. He stays where he's at. He stays where he's at. So it's a sacrifice fly that does bring in Johnny Grubb. But there are now two outs, and the Padres are on the board. It is now 7-1. to one. Next batter will be Enzo Hernandez. Hernandez is 0 for 1. Two outs now. Zachary ready to deal. I'm now rolling Strat again. That is a 4. And nothing happening there. Zachary will pitch. 2-4. Range play. Enzo Hernandez. 2-4. That's a fly ball to center field. That is hit to Geronimo. His range is a 2. No, we won't get it. Is that a single or a double? That's going to be a single for Enzo Hernandez. Base hit for Hernandez. Winfield's base running rating is a 4. With two outs becomes a 5. Single to center, plus two is a seven. And 
Geronimo, no arm. Winfield scores automatically. Mike Ivey's base running rating is a three. Is a th scores automatically. Base running rating is a three with two outs is a four. Single to center, minus one is a three. A one to three, Ivy will get the third. And no, he'll hold it second. But the Padres get another run in, and it is now seven to two as Hernandez gets an RBI single. We'll see a pinch hitter for Dan Spilner as the Padres will go to the bench. And they're going to bring out Willie Davis. Davis, 268 average, five homers, 46 RBIs. Willie Davis will pinch it against Zachary with two outs here. Checking the strategy roll. See if anything happening. 11 is a no. Zachary ready to pitch. 4-6 against the lefty. That's an automatic out. He'll get out of the inning. Star two. It's a fly out to center, and that will do it. Two runs for the Padres on two hits and a couple of walks. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 7-2 to now, Reds, as the Padres trying to make a game out of this. Padres need to keep winning games to stay within a, to stay within a shot for second or third place in the National League West. The Reds pretty much own that division. I do not see them losing it. The Reds will probably get the number one seed in the National League postseason. Bottom of the fourth, Pete Rose leads off for the Reds. Let's see who the uh, Padres want to bring up. They still can't be a starter if I want to. And they're going to come on and bring out. He's got switch left, left. Yeah. Coming on to pitch for the Padres will be Brent Strom. 12 wins, 16 losses, a 3 2 9 ERA. Strom becomes the third Padre pitcher. And Pete Rose leads off for the Big Red Machine. 72 Reds. Strom with the pitch. 1 3. Walk 20. No. Rose 5 2. Ground out to short. Out number one. Rose is now one for three. That brings up Ken Griffey. Griffey is two for two, a single and a triple. Strom will pitch. 3-3, three, three, that's a blank. Griffey, 6-3, ground out to second, out number two. Nice job by Strom. And now here's Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan is one for one. He walked but hit a home run his first time at bat. Yeah, I saw the Indians getting blow, uh, blown out by the O's today. I did see that. Strom will pitch to Morgan. That's a 4-3. That's a home run chance. Strom, 4-3, a home run chance against the lefty. Morgan is a 9. That's an 11. It's too high. Morgan, 3-4. And that's going to be a ground out to third. And that will end the inning. And for the first time in the ball game, the Reds are sent down one, two, three. After four, seven to two, Cincy. Top of the fifth inning coming up. Jerry Turner leads off for the Friars. He is 0 for 2. Zachary, let's see if Zachary can settle down and pitch a little better here for the fifth. Zachary, 5-6. Against the lefty, that's a blank. Turner, 2-3. Base hit, center field, a single for Turner. He'll go to first. Leadoff single for the Padres. That will bring up Tito Fuentes. Fuentes is 0-2, for 2, infield halfway. See if anything happening on the strat. That is a 1 I really don't see Turner stealing here. You're down by five runs. You got to let Fuentes swing. Zachary with the pitch. 2-1. That's at the park. Riverfront Stadium, 2-6. That's a possible home run to center field. But against a righty, Fuentes is a zero. No chance to hit a home run on that ball. So that's just going to be a fly out to center. 
And that's the first out. They still have to have they still have to be able to hit home runs on their card if a home run comes up on the stadium card. Here's Johnny Grubb. Grubb is one for one, singled and walk. Anything on the bases? No. Zachary, that's Sue Dice. One one, that's blank. Grubb. Five six. That's a ball hit to left field. That is a fifteen against a righty. That's going to be too high, and it's going to be a fly out to left field. Out number two. I'll tell you, the Padres are getting some rolls in some cases, but they are not getting the D twenty to help them out. So that is the second out, and now here's Dave Winfield. Winfield is one for one. Anything happening on the bases? No. Zachary, 4-5. Against a right-hander, that's going to be a blank. Winfield, 3-2. He flies out to right, and the inning is over. So all three outs were fly outs to left, center, and right, and that does it. No runs and a hit for the Padres. Halfway through the game, 7-2 Reds. The Reds are large and in charge. Question is, will this team make the World Series in my playoffs? Who knows? A lot can happen when you when you have to play a division series before the championship series. And I'm hoping my Mets take that rotation they have against this lineup. And may do a series with them maybe in the future. Bottom of the fifth. And let's see who leads off. George Foster leads off for the Reds. Brent Strom. Well, what's he going to do here? Brent Strom has got can pitch to a few batters. George Foster hit a home run his last time up. He's one for two. Strom with the pitch. 2-1. Strikeout. 18. No. Foster. 2-4. Ground out to third. That's the first out. Next up is Mr. Johnny Bench. Bench is 0-2. Strom. 5-5 five, five against a righty. That's an automatic out. Star 1. Ground out to short. Two men down. Strom doing a pretty good job so far. Here's Tony Perez. Perez is uh, two for two, a single and a double. Strom ready to pitch. Three, two, strikeout, four. He got him, struck him out. Side retired. Strom has retired the last six Reds bat, the, the first Red Six batters he has faced. And after five, it remains seven to two in favor of the Red Legs. As they were called sometimes during the mid 50s. Sixth inning coming up. Mike Ivey leads off for the Padres. Zachary, still pretty strong. They'll keep him out there. He got a five run lead. This is the 70s, not the 2020s. Zachary will pitch. One, two. That's a strikeout. Eight. No. Just a little out of there. Ivy will swing. Three, one. Line drive to third. And that's out number one. Here's Doug Raider. Raider is 0 for 2. Zachary will pitch. 4-1. That's a double question mark. Raider's a righty. A 1 to 8 is an automatic out. The 15 is too high. Raider, 1-4, and that's a star one. And that's going to be a ground out to short, and that's the second out. So right now, Zachary maybe has calmed down a little bit since the uh, fourth inning. It'll bring up Kendall. Kendall is 0-2, does have a sacrifice fly in the game. Zachary, 6-2, that's a walk, that five. That will walk Kendall, so Kendall will trot down to first. And that is the third walk given up by Zachary. And here's Enzo Hernandez. Hernandez singled his last time up, one for two. 
Uh, see if anything happening on the bases. The 16 says a negative. Zachary ready to pitch. 3-3. Three, three. Home run question mark. Enzo a righty. A 1-7 to seven, it passes. That is a 4. Hernandez against a right-hander is a 3. A 1-3. to three, Hernandez hits a 2-run jack. No, it's a 6. He can't get it. But Hernandez will swing. 3-3, three, three, and he just chops it to short to end the inning. Wow, went from a two-run jack to a grounder to shortstop, and that does it. All the Padres get is a walk, and they are stranded. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Still Fanny like booze, too. <laughs> bottom of the sixth inning. Brent Strom can pitch to one batter before being tired. He is due to bat first in the seventh. They're going to see if he can go. Cesar Geronimo leads off for the Red Legs. He is one for two. Cocaine and hookers, my friend. Magic Mike, great movie. Magic Mike, great movie. Brent Strom and Geronimo. Brent Strom will pitch. 3-3, three, three, that's a blank. Geronimo will swing. 2-6. Star one, ground out to short. I got to admit, Strom has done a heck of a job since coming out of the bullpen. He is now tired. And they're going to see if he can pitch a little further on. Here's Dave Concepcion. Concepcion is 0 for 2. Strom will deal. That's a 6-1. Against a righty, that's a walk chance. 15, that's too high. Concepcion will swing, 2-3, that's a base hit to right field, a single for Concepcion, and he gets his first hit of the game. So he holds there. Pat Zachary is the next batter. Zachary's pitched to 20, can pitch to one more batter before being tired. 7-2. I say I really this is the 70s. I don't think you take him out here. I think you let him pitch. This is the 70s, not 2020. Zachary's going to stay in there and bat. You got a five-run lead and you can always save your and always good to give your bullpen a rest. So a five-run lead, Zachary is going to bat and they may call for an automatic bunt. Let's first see what happens on the strat. Actually, there is no strat roll. So it's a, if there actually is no strat roll, I'm going to have Zachary bunt automatically. So I'm going to have him bunt. So let's see. So Strom will go ahead and pick, make the pitch. That's a 6-3. That's a strikeout. Now on a bunt, the, in, the batter is half. So 29 plus 1 is 30. Divided by 2 is 15. That is a 14. Zachary still strikes out attempting to bunt. And he is out of there. Two down. He probably bunted it foul. And that and that ended his at-bat. So two outs now. And the batter is Pete Rose. No strat roll happening right now. Strom will go ahead and pitch. 4-4. Four, four. That's a wild pitch. That 4 will send Concepcion to second. A wild pitch by Strom. Concepcion goes to second base. Now you got to think what you want to do here. They're going to trust Strom to get Rose out if he can. You're down by five runs, really. What do you got to lose? Rose is one for three. Strom is going to go ahead and try to get this out. Two outs. Strom at bat. Strom at bat. Strom on the, on the mound. Here's the pitch. 4-3. Home run. Pete Rose against the lefty is a 9. That's a 13. It's too high. Rose does not get it that way. Rose will swing 5-6, and he pops out to third to end the inning. No runs and a hit for the Reds. A wild pitch, but that is all as Brent Strom leans back and is able to get out of the inning without giving up a run. Six in the books, seven to two reds.
Seventh inning coming up. Pat Zachary on the mound. Strom due to bat. The Padres will go to the bench. And coming on to pinch it will be Willie McCovey, Hall of Famer. Willie McCovey, 204 average that year, seven homers, 36 RBIs. Of course, Willie McCovey was in his latter days of the season. I believe this was McCovey's last year anyway here with the Padres. So Willie McCovey will lead off against Zachary to start the top of the seventh. Zachary will pitch. 5-1, strikeout, 14, got him. He got McCovey, struck him out. And that is strikeout number two for Zachary. That's the first out. But Zachary is now tired. The Reds are going to stick with him. Here's Jerry Turner. Turner is one for three. Zachary, three, two. Range play. Turner, three, five. That's a ground ball to second base. That's it to Joe Morgan. His range is a three. He won't get it. That's going to be a base hit. Turner hits it away from him, and Turner has his second hit of the game. And now here's Tito Fuentes. Now you got to wonder what to do with Zachary, the runner on first. I'm going to stick with him. There is no strat roll, so Zachary's going to pitch to Fuentes, but the infield is halfway. Zachary will pitch to Fuentes. Seven to two Reds, bottom of the top of the seventh. Zachary, four two. That's at the park. Riverfront Stadium, six five. That's a ground ball to short. Do they turn the double play? Two, one, two. Second base is Morgan. He has a zero. A one to two. It's a double play. It is a six. No. Turner will advance to second base, and Fuentes is out. And that is two down. They don't turn the double play, but they do get the out. The only play was the first. Next up for the Padres, Johnny Grubb. Grubb is one for two, singled and walked. Zachary trying to just get out of this inning. He may not pitch the eighth. Two outs. Zachary with the pitch. And I lost my dice. Hold on a minute. Time out. Then I see it. Sewer dice. I'll re-roll. Zachary with the pitch. 1-4. That's a blank. Grubb will swing. 2-4. That's a star six. A fly out to right. And that will end the inning. So Zachary does a good job. No runs a hit for the Padres. And we are at the seventh inning stretch. Sing your take me out to the ball game. I'll be right back. Don't forget, we have 10-minute ticker coming up after the game. And our next game tomorrow night will be the last game in the month of July. And we are in Minnesota. The Oakland Athletics take on the Minnesota Twins tomorrow night. Paul Mitchell 
will take on Dave Goltz, a battle between two teams that are fighting for the American League West. Oakland at Minnesota tomorrow night, last game for the month of July. So that is July 31st. So that should be a fun game to play, Oakland and Minnesota. We take a look at the Swingin' A's going up against the high-flying Twins. Bottom of the seventh here, Ken Griffey leads off for the Reds. Padres need a pitcher. And let's see what they're going to bring up. They got left, left, right. So I think they'll go with a lefty. Uh, let's see what they got here. Coming on to pitch for the Padres will be one of their better closers, Dave Tomlin. Tomlin will be the fourth Padre pitcher. Dave Tomlin, no wins, a loss, no saves, a 2.84 ERA. He will pitch to Ken Griffey to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Tomlin with the pitch. 4-5, and that's a blank. Griffey will swing for six, fly out to center. The Padre bullpen has done a great job. The starting pitching just couldn't get it going. Here's little Joe Morgan. Morgan is one for two, had a home run, and he walked. Moment of silence from Link from the Mod Squad. Oh, jeez. Bob Tomlin will pitch, one five, at the park. Riverfront Stadium, 3-4. That's a home run to the pull side. Morgan, a left, Tomlin, a lefty, a 1-9. to nine. The 15 is too high. The 15 is too high, and that's just going to be, that's a home run to the pull side. That's going to be a fly out the left, out number two. Oh, Morgan just missed that. Morgan just missed hitting his second home run tonight. Here's George Foster. Foster won for three. He has a homer as red as well. Tomlin will pitch. 1-5. Again, that's at the park. Riverfront Stadium getting a lot of work tonight. 1-2. That's a fly out the right, and the inning is over. The first three innings of the game, Padres' Dave Frazelbin gave up seven runs. The last four innings of the game, the Reds have only gotten one hit. The Padre bullpen has been outstanding. They're probably going to lose this game, but it's been outstanding. After seven, seven to two Reds. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Zachary is due to bat fifth, and they're going to leave him out there to see if he can go one more inning. But the Reds bullpen is ready to go. Dave Winfield leads off for the Friars. He is one for two. Zachary ready to pitch. 2-1. That's at the park. Riverfront Stadium, 4-2. That's a blank. We got a rare play. We have a rare play, so let's see what it is. Rare play, base is empty. 3-2. Grounded a second base who throws in the dirt, making the first baseman scoop the ball. Resolve play like a range play check for the first baseman to see if he scoops the ball. Batter out, otherwise E4. So it's a grounded a second. The throw goes to first. So it's a range check on Tony Perez. His range is a four. He makes this. It's an out. Yes, he does. He scoops it in the dirt, and Winfield is out of there. One down. And that just becomes a ground out to short, a ground out to second. Nice play there. Here is Mike Ivy. Ivy is one for three. Zachary will pitch. Keith White joins us here at Riverfront Stadium. 5-3, that's a walk. 14, too high. Ivy, 6-2. Against a righty, he grounds it right back to Zachary. And he'll toss the first for the out. Two down. Zachary is tired, but he is reaching back for more. He is doing the job. Here is Doug Raider. Raider is 0 for 3. Padres will go ahead and bat. Zachary holding out. 
One six strikeout. Two. Got him. He got Raiders. Struck him out. A one two three inning for Zachary. He is getting it done. He may be tired, but he's doing the job. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Still seven to two in favor of the Reds. Dave Tomlin is the pitcher, and the Padres are going to keep him out there, even though the Reds have right, right, left coming up. But you're down by five runs, and Tomlin actually is your best bullpen pitcher. Here's Mr. Johnny Bench. Bench is, what is he? He's 0 for 3. Bench doesn't have a hit tonight. Tomlin will pitch. 6-2. That's a walk. That 6 will walk Bench, and Bench will trot down to first. First time Bench has been on base, he does get the walk. And here's Tony Perez. Perez is two for three, a single and a double. No strat. Tomlin will pitch. 4-1 against a righty. That's blank. Perez, 3-4. That's a fly out to right. Out number one. Next batter is Cesar Geronimo. Geronimo is one for three. Tomlin ready to pitch to him. Three, six, strikeout. And nope, actually a walk chance, actually, because he's tired. Or is that a walk? No, he's not. I'm sorry. This is Tomlin. Tomlin, he was not tired yet. He will be after this battle. That's a strikeout chance. The 16 is too high anyway. Geronimo will swing. 2-2. Two, two, star three. That's a ground ball to third. They turn the double play. 1-0-2. Second base for Padres is Fuentes. Is a zero. A 1-2. to two. It's a double play. No. Bench will be thrown out at second. And Geronimo is safe at first for two outs. Now Tomlin is tired. And he's going to stay out there. And he's going to pitch to Dave Concepcion. Concepcion is one for three. Tomlin ready to pitch. He is now tired. Pitch on the way. Five, three, strikeout, 14. That's too high. Concepcion will swing the bat. 4-1, and he just grounds it to short, and the throw is going to go to second to get Geronimo, and the inning is over. Nothing there for the Reds except a walk. A tale of two games here so far. The Reds couldn't hit, couldn't, the Reds couldn't miss in, in, in innings one, two, three, and now the Reds can't hit in the last eight innings, but it's still a 7-2 lead for the Reds. Will we see some ninth inning magic? Top of the ninth for the Padres. A great game pitch by Pat Zachary. And he is going to try to get the complete game, but the red bullpen is ready to go. Leading off for the Padres is Fred Kendall. And I'm going to check the bench and see if there's anybody else I can bring out. And the, the Padre bench is meh. So it looks like it's going to be the starter. So here's Fred Kendall leading off for the Padres here on the top of the ninth. Seven to two. Zachary's going to stay out there and try to go the distance. As long as he doesn't hit a fatigue inning or gets a little closer, who knows? Is this room 518? It certainly is. Zachary, 1-4. That's a blank. Kendall. 6-4. That's a base hit to left field. Kendall gets a single, and the leadoff man is on. What? Did you expect a 1-2-3 closing inning at RJL 518? I think not. So the leadoff batter is on. The batter now is Enzo Hernandez. And the Reds are not going to take any chances. Zachary is going to come out now. But what a job he did. Only gave up two runs in this game. But they are going to remove him. They're not going to take any chances. They want this game to be over. 
It's not a save situation, but they're going to bring out Raleigh Eastwick. 11 wins, 5 losses, 26 saves, a 2.09 ERA. Raleigh Eastwick will pitch to Enzo Hernandez here with a runner on first here in the top of the ninth inning. Eastwick will pitch. There's no strat. The infield is halfway. Eastwick with the pitch. 5-2. Hit by pitch. 16, no. Hernandez will swing. 5-4. Star one. That's a fly out to center. Out number one. And Kendall won't be able to move. Pinch hitter coming up for the Padres. Not much on the bench. So coming on to pinch it. For the Padres is going to be Ted Kubiak, 236 average, no homers, 26 RBIs. Eastwick will now face Kubiak with a runner on first. Eastwick ready to deal. 1-1, one, one, that's a blank. Kubiak swings. 3-4, that's a fly out to right, and that's out number two. Last chance for the Padres, Jerry Turner. Turner is two for four today. He has two singles. Not a safe situation, but Eastwick trying to shut the door and make sure the Reds hold on to this lead. Eastwick ready to pitch. Is this the story of the pitches of Eastwick? Keith, do not become baseball demos. No, Keith, no. Eastwick will pitch. 1-5. That's a walk. A 4. Yeah, he walks Turner. And the game will continue. Turner will go to first. Runners advance. The batter now is Tito Fuentes with runners at first and second and two outs. Eastwick will concentrate on the pitcher. Here's the pitch by Eastwick. <coughs> One, two, that's a blank. Fuentes will get to swing. Four, six, and that's a ground ball to second base. Picked up by Morgan. He has it. Pumps once, pumps twice, throws to first. That's your game. The Reds go ahead and take care of business as they down the Padres tonight, seven to two. No runs and a hit for the Padres. A nice win for the Reds as they take care of business against the Friars. They win it 7-2 to tonight. And this one belongs to the Reds. Don't go away. 10-minute ticker. Come And the final line score coming right up. For the Reds, seven runs on ten hits and no errors. For the Padres, two runs on seven hits, no errors. The winning pitcher is Pat Zachary. He goes ahead and gets the win. Dave Frazelbin will take the loss. No save in tonight's game. Uh, historically, the Reds won this game 9-3. to three. They win this game 7-2. to two. There were 18 hits in the actual game. We had 17. Two errors in the actual game. We had none. So not too bad. It is now time for the 10-minute ticker brought to you by Fast Score Baseball of Replay Sports. First off, the Reds go ahead and get the win over the Padres. And we'll start here. Cleveland taking on Boston for July 29th. Cleveland with a 9. 
15, and that is one run. Boston has an 11, 22, and that will give them a run, and the Red Sox will beat the Tribe. Baltimore taking on Detroit, the bird on the mound. Baltimore has a 3, 33, and that is two runs. Detroit has a 10, 45. That's going to be five runs. Detroit will beat the Orioles. The Orioles can't afford to be losing games to teams they really need to beat. Texas and Minnesota, Rangers with a 13, 65. Good roll. That is nine runs. Minnesota has a 14, 25, and that is three runs. And the Rangers will beat them. Pittsburgh at the Mets. Pittsburgh has an 11. 42. And that is four runs. I have Mickey Lowlitz on the mound for the Mets. They have an 8. Let's see. Four runs. I need a 42 or higher to tie or win. 51. There we go. That's going to be four. And we're going to tie. So we have a chance to win it in extras. Pittsburgh has a zero clutch. They roll a three. The Mets have a minus two. So the only, uh, I need a six. No, that's going to be a win for the Pirates. I'm going to give them four extra runs, and they're going to win this game eight to four. Uh, Chicago taking on Philadelphia. Cubs have a five. 64, and that is six runs for the Cubs. Philadelphia has a 15, 32, and that is four runs. The Cubs will beat the Phillies, and I'll take that. That'll help my Mets. We don't lose a game to Philadelphia. Moving on to July 30, Yankees taking on Boston. The Yankees have an 11, 42, and that is four runs. Boston with a 9. 22, and that's going to be two runs. The Yankees will win another game. They're on pace to win 120 games. White Sox in California. White Sox with a 7. 41, and that is three runs. That's because the Yankees are just getting the best rolls. California with a 5. 13, that's 0. White Sox will beat the Angels. Baltimore at Detroit. Baltimore with an 11. 12, and that is one run. The Tigers have a 10, 45, and that is five runs. Again, Baltimore loses to a team they need to beat. Texas and Kansas City, Texas with an 8, 64, that is seven runs. The Royals have an 11, 64, that is eight runs, and Kansas City will beat the Royals. Kansas City at one point had a losing record. The Royals right now look like the team to beat. In the American League West, trying to catch Oakland. I don't think they will, but anything's possible. Cleveland at Milwaukee. Cleveland with a 12. 63. That is seven runs for the Indians. Milwaukee with a 6. 54. And that is five runs. And the Indians will beat the Brewers. Brewers are really fading. Oakland and Minnesota. We have this game tomorrow. Oakland with a 13. 61, and they get seven runs. Minnesota with a 14, 56, and that is also seven runs. We got a tie. Oakland, a minus one. Three minus one is two. Minnesota, a zero. They roll a two. It's a tie, but it goes to the home team. That is Minnesota, and that's going to be an eight, and that's automatically, I don't have to roll for that. It's going to be an eight to seven win. For the Twins as they beat Oakland. St. Louis at the Cubs. St. Louis has a 12. 25. And that is three runs. The Cubs have a 14. 42. And that is five runs. The Cubs will beat the Cardinals. The Cardinals are beginning to fade now. Padres and the Reds in a doubleheader. Game one. And both teams are five versus 22. San Diego with a five. 11, that's a zero. Cincinnati with a 22, they can't lose. 61, and that is just going to be nine. So they blow, to, they blow the Padres up in game one. Game number two, San Diego with a five. 65, that's a lot better. That's seven runs. The Reds, though, have a 22. 
55. That's going to be nine runs for them, and the Reds will take both games from the Padres in a doubleheader. Atlanta taking on the Astros. Atlanta with a nine. 46, and that is five runs. The Astros with an eight. 15. Nope, that's going to be only one run, and the Astros will lose to Atlanta, and I know that Steeler fan will say red. Philadelphia taking on the Mets. Philadelphia with a 9. 25, and that is two runs. The Mets have Jerry Kuzman on the mound and a 7. I need him to roll a 22 or higher. 54, there we go. That's going to be a win, and the Mets will get a happy recap over the Phillies. Montreal and Pittsburgh. Montreal with a four. 65, that's a good roll. That's six runs for the Expos, but Pittsburgh has a 17. But a 16 is not going to cut it. That's only going to be th that's going to be three. 16, that is going to be three runs, and the Expos will beat Pittsburgh, and that allows the Mets to gain a game on the Pirates. Dodgers and the Giants. Dodgers have a 10. 51, and that is 51 with a 10, and that is five runs. The Giants have a 7, and that's 41, and that is three runs. The Dodgers will beat the Giants. Giants got to be careful. Remember, Houston, San Diego, the Dodgers, and the Giants all have a shot to win to get second and third place. Remember, top three make the playoffs. That is your 10-minute ticker if your team won tonight. Congratulations. If they didn't, there's always tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be at Metropolitan Stadium as the Oakland Athletics take on the Minnesota Twins. Paul Mitchell against Dave Goltz. The final game in the month of July as we now approach August and the playoff push. Bears Den, Steeler fan, BBDB, Bob B, uh, Keith White, Philip Reynolds, Tribe fan, 879, Bob's Tabletop Sports. Tabletop Sports, see what we got here, and every, and I think I got everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. Please leave a like on your way out through the turnstiles. Subscribe if you've not done so, and make sure you hit the bell. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, stay strong. We'll see you guys tomorrow. This one belongs to the Reds, 72 over the Padres. We'll see you guys later. Have a good night.